Hello, my name is Creighton Walker and welcome to what I'm calling the Pattern Grammar Discovery Lesson. Uh, we're going to be looking at the structure and content of a lesson. It's all about discovery learning where the students are working in groups and they're working on corpus data, what Tim Johns used to call soft data-driven learning. The first stage step of the lesson is all about words having different meanings and those different meanings being associated with different patterning. Um, you can see that we need a few minutes to set the class up. We need to be giving the aim of the class, which is to introduce two fundamental principles of pattern grammar and dividing the class up into three groups. Um, now we might want to have multiple groups, multiple group A's, multiple group B's, because typically the ideal group size is about three or four. So three students or four students in group A are working on worksheet 1A and looking at the adjective afraid or data associated with the adjective afraid. Group B looking at uh, corpus data associated with the verb manage, that's worksheet 1B. And group C looking at the noun, in this case time, that's worksheet 1C. Um, and finding out what they can actually discover from the data. The afraid group, for example, uh, can immediately see that um, we've got afraid as in I'm sorry, associated with personal pronoun, typically first person I'm, I, plus verb to be, plus afraid, plus I. So the apology is typically I'm afraid I can't. I'm afraid I can't come. Um, I'm afraid we're going to have to cancel. Um, I'm afraid that uh, now in lines 13 uh, to 18, we seem to have, I was afraid that I would have problems. She was afraid that it wasn't going to work. So we seem to be more into the scared or worried or anxious uh, meaning, but he was afraid that he would be offended. Um, afraid that if I, I'm rather afraid that if I do this, then Again, it's the anxious or worried meaning. So typically we can see two different meanings here. The um, sorry, apologetic meaning and the worried or anxious meaning. Afraid of being, afraid of hurting, afraid of noun, afraid to verb. Now all these patterns from line 25 onwards um, I would argue more associated with the scared or anxious meaning of afraid. So different meanings are associated with different patterning. That first person pronoun plus B plus first, most, pro, first person pronoun, I'm afraid I can't, is typically the apology. Whereas I'm afraid of, I'm afraid to, and it shouldn't just be the preposition. What it is, is afraid to verb. We need to uh, be looking not just at the preposition, but at the patterning. Afraid of gerund, afraid of noun, afraid of being. Is that very much more that scared or anxious meaning of afraid? And here you've got a slide which summarizes some of the patterns that we've found and also cross references them to, uh, in this case, the Collins Colbilt pattern uh, grammar book two looks at the patterns associated with nouns and adjectives. Um, so I'm afraid I can't is the apology, whereas I'm I was afraid that um, is again, it, well, is moving to the, the, the anxious meaning. Um, he's afraid of, she's afraid to. Again, the anxious uh, meaning. Same sort of thing with manage. So we're hoping that each of these groups, although they're working on different data and different uh, word classes, they're going to be largely finding the same basic principle. Manage to, to do it, um, finally managed it, um, managed to get up the stairs, this coping, this, this succeeding, but despite something so that you have a disability or you have a problem, it's quite difficult, but nevertheless, I'm managed to do it. Very uh, characteristic patterning associated with that sort of cope meaning. Um, he managed to keep working. Whereas where we've got manage followed by noun, 
or noun phrase uh, managing this campaign or manage and verb manage and save manage and provide manage and maintain is very much different meaning now we seem to have moved to the meaning manage the department run the department head the department type meaning of manage as opposed to that coping meaning managed it and uh, same basic principle managed by uh, but again looking at the pattern managed by proper noun managed by Malcolm managed by noun phrase um, and managed the so manage verb plus um, typically we've got here verb plus uh, the um, plus noun and again a slide summarizing some of the uh, patterns and cross-referencing them to the HarperCollins book one in this case um, so you've got you can manage it uh, is the cope meaning he finally managed to cope meaning whereas uh, she has managed the, the Fulham branch is very much the run or heading the department meaning group C meanwhile is working on time the noun and uh, here we've got the the first first time second time which in many languages will be translated into a different word um, whereas English has time for occasion and has time um, as in uh, a consumable item takes time to heal takes time to build a relationship you've also got the clock time as soon as we've got the followed by the verb to be what time is it the time is it is um, very characteristic of, of clock time meaning and what I was saying was that um, here although it's the same word in English we may find that it's two quite distinct words or even three distinct words in another language I knew in German for example the first lines one to eight will be translated to German mal whereas nine onwards would be Zeit um, so in German it's being translated into into two words into two different words um, so lines 15 to 20 and 21 to 26 is very much this clock time whereas these lines 27 uh, right the way through to 44 is more about I would argue a period um, it's time for change it's time that you retired it's time uh, to sleep and finally a time as in period time for uh, noun or noun phrase so again each of the different meanings of time time as in occasion time as in something that one consumes time as in the clock time is being associated with a different grammatical patterning and here you can see some examples of the patterns again cross reference this time to HarperCollins the noun and adjective book and patterns found in there so um, that's step one of the lesson where they're looking at um, the different the single words and the different meaning of each of the single words and humming, coming together once they've worked in groups to share and present what they've found you could then have a break and move on to step two which is starting to move to look at patterns associated with a particular word so in this case group A is looking at a pattern associated with afraid group B one pattern associated with the verb manage and group C working with worksheet 2C uh, a pattern associated with the noun time again working in three separate independent groups and again the principle of coming having worked in these uh, worked with the data for 15 or 20 minutes coming together and sharing what they found and in this case um, with the afraid group we've got the pattern I pronoun verb linking the verb to be um, adjective uh, that clause and if we put a slot where afraid is so I I'm mm, that so I'm afraid that I'm adamant that I'm anxious that I'm ashamed that I'm aware that I'm certain that I'm confident that I'm fortunate that I'm optimistic that I'm positive that the adjectives that appear in that slot are they random are they arbitrary or can they be grouped and I think you'll find that 
I'm fortunate, I'm thankful that, I'm optimistic, I'm positive that, um, I'm lucky that, that they can in fact be grouped semantically so that you get the angry group, the fearful group, the aware group, aware, conscious, unaware, the sure group, certain, sure, adamant, confident, positive, optimistic group. Now the positive, you might argue, goes into the optimistic group. I'm optimistic that, I'm positive that, uh, it, or into the, into the hopeful group. So to some extent, the grouping is subjective. Um, and I'm sure there'll be some kind of discussion here as to where you put, do you put positive with optimistic or do you put positive in the, in the, in the sure group? Um, but really that is not such a, a major problem at all. You, you would expect some kind of discussion as to which word goes with, in which group. The important point to be getting across here is that um, these words are not just purely random and appearing in that pattern. The pattern, to some extent, carries some of the meaning and is therefore going to be associated with groups of words with not necessarily the same meaning, but with a similar or related meaning. Same sort of principle we see also with the group B, working with the verb. Um, the pattern, I finally, mm, to prove, I finally um, grew to, to, to value, to, to prove will, will change, so to I finally learned to cook. I she finally paused to. So the pattern is I plus adverb plus verb plus to infinitive. And um, the question is whether these verbs that appear in that slot can be grouped semantically. And the answer is probably yes. Well, definitely yes. Again, there may be some discussion about which word goes in which group, but you've got like, um, I finally agreed to, I finally promised to, I finally decided to, I finally chose to. You might want to make two groups out of that agreed group. I finally started to, I st finally began to, so pretty near synonyms. I finally um, paused to, I finally waited to, 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 to hear his answer. Um, so again, the principle is coming over this time with, with verbs that a pattern, um, with a slot in it, which in this case is a verb, the items that fill that slot, the verbs that fill that slot will be semantically related. They will be able to group into what, um, Jill Francis and Susan Huntsman call meaning groups. And, uh, We've got the same sort of thing happening with group C, but this time with the noun. Um, it takes m mm to heal. It takes time to heal. Um, it takes ages to heal. It takes years to heal. It takes months to heal. It takes days to heal. It takes decades to heal. You've got a group of related nouns. And another group, it takes courage to. It takes balls to. It takes bravery to. So these nouns that appear in that slot, it takes m to verb, can be grouped semantically. So you get the time group, the bravery group, the effort group, and so on. Again, some discussion as to maybe where they, where they lie, whether there's um, five or six groups, four groups, that to some extent is discussable, is, is, is um, subjective, but the basic principle is that the nouns that fall into that pattern or the verbs that fall into the pattern that previously looked at um, can be grouped. They're not just arbitrary. And therefore, to some extent, you can argue that the pattern carries the meaning or part of the meaning. Where does meaning reside? Does it reside in the word or the co-text? In this case, the patterning. The final stage of the lesson is uh, basically facilitated and led by the teacher. Um, so we've worked at that stage one on the words, looking at um, adjective, noun and verb and finding that these uh, words like afraid or manage have different meanings, manage to do it as opposed to manage the department. And those different meanings are associated with different um, patterning. and. Uh, they were working on the data in groups and then coming together and sharing their findings. And that was the main finding, the main principle of that first step. Step two was looking at a pattern and saying, okay, if we uh, take 
the noun time out of this pattern. It takes m to and look at the nouns that appear in that slot. The nouns that appear in that slot do or can be grouped semantically. It takes ages to, to do something. It takes years to do something. It takes weeks to do something. It takes months to do something. Um, so the pattern, to some extent, is associated with groups of semantically related nouns in that case. Same sort of principle we saw with group B at the verbs and same sort of principle we saw with group A with the adjectives and the, uh, um, the pattern they were looking at. So these are the two important principles to bring together at the end. Number one, words with different meanings, polysemous words will be associated with different patterning. Step two, the patterns themselves carry some of the meaning and we're using the pattern and noticing the pattern often um, to get uh, quite a, a, a major component of, of the meaning. And we're not just looking at the individual word for the meaning. And those are two very basic and very key elements of pattern grammar. Just as a postscript, uh, you might be interested to see how patterns are actually used in real life. Um, the Doctor Who series on BBC television here in the UK um, has recently launched, but this time, the Time Lord, Doctor Who, has previously always been a man. But now, for the first time, we had a woman. And they used an ambiguity, an overlap between two patterns um, to promote the series. They used the slogan, and often advertising slogans, catchphrases, um, exploit ambiguity. They play, not in this case on words, they're playing on patterns. And there's two patterns which are overlapping here. Um, it's the pattern, um, it's about time that we had a woman doctor compared with the programme is all about time because Doctor Who, the main character, is a time lord. He, or in this case, she moves through time using a TARDIS. I don't want to go into all the detail of Doctor Who, but here you can see that there's, there is actually an overlap um, between the, um, the two patterns and that they're, they're exploiting, they're just giving you part of um, both of those patterns is about time and playing with it. Thank you very much indeed.